Huckleberry, Skeletor, and I got back from the vet yesterday. It was quite a lot of driving, but we got some definitive answers from the vet, which I'm going to be putting in a totally separate video. Skeletor was a superstar on the road, but it definitely took a lot of energy out of him. I just got finished feeding everybody breakfast and I am going to walk the pasture and see how we're looking for our reseeding project. Pretty much all the ice is melted and the pasture is pretty solid. It's not muddy at all. There are a few stray pieces of trash here and there that I'm cleaning up. I have also been taking note of all of the badger holes that have been made over winter. Unlike the little ground squirrel holes, these guys are big enough to really hurt the horses, so I do fill them in. Most of them are actually from when the badger was digging out the gophers while they were sleeping over winter. This one looks like he was here quite recently and Huckleberry thinks so too. Typically I fill all these holes in before I harrow the pasture for the spring. After I harrow, it is really easy to see if they pop up again. For the most part, these big holes that the badger digs over winter, once I fill them in, he won't come back here. His main burrow is on the other side of the fence line and it's out of the horse's pasture, so he just uses that one all summer long. Looking out across the pasture, it does look like there are tons of holes. This is a really old one that I have to fill in. Some of these aren't holes at all, they're just where the ground has settled in a little bit over winter, so I'll go back in and fill those as well. The farthest pasture from the barn doesn't have a whole lot of gopher activity in it, it is pretty flat. I am planning on coming back this evening and starting on the pasture, so when it rains in a couple of days, I'll be ready to lay the seed out. In order for the overseeder to work properly, I need to make sure that the soil contacts the seed. This is the only badger hole I found in this far pasture and it is gigantic. The horses are pretty good about staying away from them, but I don't want to risk it so all of these will get filled. This far pasture is the last one to get grazed during the year, so it has all summer to grow. It is a little bit more rocky than the other pasture, and part of it does get irrigated by the neighbor's irrigation when it comes around, so the grass stays pretty thick for part of it. I am just gonna mosey on over to the fence line and check and make sure that nothing like this has happened. This is just a tiny little piece that has come undone. I will fix that, but it's not really a big deal. Huckleberry. It looks like one of Huckleberry's toys made it into the neighbor's field over winter. Huckleberry does love the jolly balls, but he tears the handles off in about a month or so. So this pitiful looking jolly ball. He'll still play with it, but it's not as fun when they don't have the handles. Huckleberry did come with me to the vet yesterday and he was pretty tuckered out from the car ride. He is used to getting a lot of exercise during the day, so he gets a little bit antsy if he's in the car more than three hours. This pasture does have a lot more manure in it than the other pasture. It also gets a little bit overgrazed. This one I do reseed every single year, especially in the high traffic areas. This is that spot where the little stream was uh, last week. The grass here is definitely longer than in other places. I bet once I harrow this area, it'll really shoot up. Okay, let's this go. tiny little pasture is also getting pretty long. I am going to go in and check on Skeletor. He is super hey, tired. The trailer ride was pretty long, but where I live, we do have to go up and over the mountains to get to the vet. A six hour trailer ride is long if it's flat, but when you have to balance going up and down, switchbacky mountain passes, it is extra hard. So. Skeletor is probably going to take a few days to recover. 
Other than being a little bit tired though, he is in really good spirits. I think the other longest trailer ride he had with me was when I bought him at the sale. It was only about two hours. He got hauled all around the area last summer though, so he is definitely used to trailer rides and he behaves very well whenever I take him anywhere. I can definitely tell he's tired because he's even eating his treat slow today. I had to go home to do some real work, but I came back in the evening to finish some more chores with the pasture. I am going to fill in some of the gopher holes and also harrow a little bit. It is supposed to snow, maybe rain a little bit tomorrow, so if the weather cooperates, I'm going to harrow and put some seed down. I did check the weather because it is looking a little bit cloudy and the wind is really picking up. It would be the perfect time to lay down some seeds except we're supposed to have wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour. If I put seed down right now, there is a pretty good chance that one big gust would just blow it away. So instead of wasting all my seed, I am just going to harrow the field so the poop gets broken up. The harrow is also going to dig up the dirt a tiny little bit and that'll make it easier for the seeds to actually grow. They need to be in contact with the soil otherwise they will just sit on top of the grass. So the harrow will do a pretty good job of making that happen. I am going to start in this very far pasture and see how much I get done. This harrow was on the property when I started renting it, so I've been using it for eight or nine years now. It is finally starting to get worn out and sometimes it gets really tangled up because the tines are missing some pieces. I have a gigantic harrow that I can pull behind my truck, but this one I can drive so much faster with. I am hoping once I get going, it'll shake out this rough spot and it'll lay flat. Otherwise, it won't do a very good job of digging up the soil. I gave it a few kicks for good measure. It did not seem like it was budging. I had some trouble with this one last year, so hopefully it'll straighten itself out. Since this pasture has hardly any ground squirrel holes, I can drive pretty fast when I'm harrowing. It sounds like the harrow is acting a little bit weird and it is all rolled up in a ball still. I don't get annoyed very often, but this is one of the things that really, really annoys me. I stopped for about a half an hour and tried to get this thing untangled and I just couldn't get it apart. I ended up flipping it over so the tines were facing up and then dragging it to try and get it to untangle. After doing that for a while, I flipped it back over and everything was still a giant mess. I decided to try and drag with it tangled up and it seemed like it was doing a fairly decent job. This pasture isn't super big. I want to say that it's like seven or eight acres. If I can zip around here, it should only take me about half an hour to harrow the whole entire thing. It is a really pretty day out, but I can definitely feel the wind picking up. I think I was maybe going a little bit too fast because the harrow fell off and did like a somersault maneuver. Since it was still pretty balled up, I decided to flip it around and try and drag from the other side and see if that helped. At this point, I'm getting pretty annoyed that it's not working correctly because I haven't even done one trip around the pasture yet. I was hoping to get all three of my bigger pastures done today, but it looks like this harrow is going to make it impossible. I was kind of operating on a three strikes you're out policy and after trying and trying with this harrow, I decided it just wasn't worth it anymore. I was having to go way too slow and it wasn't covering all of the area that it needed to cover. 
I was moving as slow as molasses. So at this rate, I would only be able to finish one pasture before I had to feed the horses for the night. Even if I wasn't able to get any seed down today, I wanted to get the pastures harrowed before the first big rain of the spring. I eventually gave up and went back to the barn to get something else to drag the pasture with. This is a homemade drag that I made with a little piece of hog wire last year. I'm going to bring some extra baling twine because that's what I'm pulling it with. I had thought about buying a new drag last year but they're like 400 bucks and this piece of fence was like 20 bucks and as you can see it does a pretty good job. It took me only about 25 minutes to harrow that entire pasture. Since it's getting a little bit late I am going to harrow Goose and Whiplash's tiny pasture next. I did decide against filling in the gopher holes this time. I can really do that anytime and I want to make sure I'm ready when the weather's perfect so I can seed. Until the grass is about three or four inches long, I can see the gopher holes just fine and the horses won't be out on the pasture until then. So today it is not really a priority. I am going to get into Goose and Whiplash's pasture through this other pasture. This middle pasture is the one that most of the geldings will stay out on for the summer. Somebody left a little bit of a rude comment on my other video about how my pasture looks horrible. I think you really have to remember how cold it gets here in the winter so even if there is grass left over in the fall it will die. This time of year the pasture looks pretty barren but I promise you it will spring up in a week or two and look completely different. I am pretty serious about pasture management because it does save me a lot of money and hay that I need to feed the horses. So this time of year the horses do not go out on pasture, there really isn't anything for them to eat out here. They would definitely try and eat all the little baby grasses and then it wouldn't have enough time to mature. That is probably the easiest way to ruin your pasture. Typically the horses won't get turned back out on the grass until maybe June 1st, somewhere around there. It really depends on how much rain we get and how good the grass comes up. You can see again here where that little stream was in Goose and Whiplash's pen, the grass is growing a lot faster than all the other spots in the pasture. This area right here I did reseed last summer and some of it didn't take very well. Goose and Whiplash are the only ones out on this pasture and it's pretty small. I think it's probably around 3 acres. It took me maybe 15 minutes to drag and it is definitely looking a lot better now. This pasture has a few random ground squirrel holes but not very many. I think the majority of their tunnel system is in this main pasture. Although these horses won't be getting turned out onto their big pastures until about June, I do have tiny pastures for all of them. They need to get acclimated to the grass very slowly so they don't develop any laminitis. I don't have too many horses that are sensitive to the spring grass, but it's always a good precaution to take because you don't want to be treating them for laminitis for a few months when you could save yourself the headache entirely by introducing them to the pasture properly. It has been super warm and the horses have been going through tons of water. As you can see, this pasture does have quite a few really tall gopher mounds. It makes getting this harrowed quickly a little bit more tricky. You can see here pretty well how this harrow breaks up all the manure. I have had quite a few people comment on how it's a bummer I don't have anyone to help me do all of these chores. But honestly, the time that I'm doing chores, I do a lot of planning about what I'm going to do in the next couple weeks. Today I was trying to decide whether or not I would go to a horse sale. There are a few coming up, but I need to take into consideration what I found out with Skeletor at the vet and make sure I have enough time to do everything. 
it does look like there's quite a bit of soil exposed so this should be able to take the seed pretty well I finished all the harrowing that I wanted to get done today and that's perfect because it is right around time for me to feed these guys their dinner another nice thing about me doing all the chores myself is that it is super satisfying when I complete a task for the day even if it's something small if I get one of these smaller jobs done every single day, then I can stay on track and make sure everything is looking in tip-top shape. Although this time of year it may not look like it, I do like to try and keep a tidy barn and property. Scarlet's round pen is looking really good. I probably only have a day or two left of taking old manure out of it and it should be right down to the bare sand. I think she is hinting to me that she is ready for her dinner. I noticed Skeletor was up ready for his dinner as well. And for the first time today, I saw Tiny. She has been a little bit weird since I came back from our trip. It's almost like she's angry she didn't see me for a day. Every time I tried to snuggle her, she was just running away, pretending like she had other more important things to do. I sat down for a little while while all the horses ate their dinner. Sometimes it's just really nice to sit and listen to them munch on their hay. The birds are also out chirping already this spring so that is really nice to hear. Tiny seems like she is a little preoccupied with them today. As we're coming into summer and I think about how I'm going to divvy up my time this year. I am thinking more and more that it might be possible for me to stop doing my regular job. When I did my taxes a few months ago, I gave myself a goal for the amount of money that I had to be making on YouTube for me to even think about stopping my real job. And it looks like this month I might hit that number, so that is really exciting. After I feed the horses in the morning, I go home and do maybe four hours of work. It would be so nice if I could just go to the barn in the morning and not leave all day. I get comments all the time asking how people can help the horses and honestly you guys just watching the video is the biggest help of all. When you like, subscribe, and share, that does a tremendous amount to make sure that other people can find my channel and all the little views over time really do add up so thank you guys so much for watching everything that i put out i really really appreciate it i'm not exactly sure when i'll be done with skeletor's video about his vet visit but it should be within the next week hopefully so keep your eyeballs peeled for that one thank you guys again so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video